The death toll from a Russian missile strike in central Ukraine is expected to climb with the search for survivors underway. A long-range missile struck a busy shopping centre in the city of Kremenchuk, southeast of the capital Kiev. More than 1,000 people were inside at the time. At least 13 people have been killed and another 50 are wounded. Rescuers are trawling through the rubble with family members lining up nearby waiting for updates on missing loved ones. The United Nations has condemned the attack and Security Council has scheduled an emergency meeting in New York. Today's Russian strike on a shopping centre in Kremenchuk is one of the most daring terrorist attacks in European history. A peaceful city, an ordinary shopping centre, inside women, children, ordinary civilians. Before the announcement of the air alert, there were about a thousand people inside. Fortunately, as far as we know at this time, many managed to get out. But there were still many inside, workers, visitors. Only completely heartless terrorists who have no place on earth can strike missiles at such an object. Volodymyr Zelensky speaking there. Well, Global Affairs Editor John Lyons joins us now. Uh, John, we've seen a ramp up in these escalations by Russia attacking the centre in Ukraine, in Kiev. What are the motivations here? We know it's coinciding with the G7 meeting and, of course, NATO uh, tomorrow. Well, Catherine, it looks to me like uh, it's the Russians, it's Putin saying, you can be at Bavaria with the G7 and you can be making jokes about my pecs and, you know, we'll get photos of him, you know, shirtless on the hall. Course. But at the end of the day, he's driving this war. Uh, this is an absolute civilian target. Imagine a shopping centre in Australia. We've all been in them, more than a thousand people. And suddenly it's chaos, it's death, it's walls and roofs falling in, it's fire, it's family screaming, it's being separated from the children you went there with or the elderly mother or father you took. Of all of the horrors of this war, this is one of the worst incidents we've seen so far. Do you think that this marks a significant shift? This moment will be looked back upon as the time that the war in Ukraine changed? I think so, because up until now, the Russians have often said we're hitting military targets. And of course, in war, both sides do hit military targets. The Russians are not even arguing that this was a military target. This was an unadulterated civilian target. And so many people have talked about war crimes, etc. Mm. Hitting, targeting civilian targets, and these are pretty precise missiles. These are not sort of, you know, homemade missiles. These are precise missiles which hit the centre of a shopping centre. Mm. And so I think that what this says to the G7 leaders and NATO, you can talk all you want, you can sit around tables in Bavaria making jokes about Vladimir Putin, but at the end of the day, he's driving this and he clearly has no intention of stopping. Mm. He doesn't care anymore about international public opinion. He's going to hit civilian targets. I'll ask you more a little bit about G7 and NATO in just a moment, but you mentioned war crimes there. We know that um, a local governor has called it a crime against humanity terror against the civilian population, calling it a war crime. Zelensky, as we just heard before, the most brazen terrorist acts in European history. Does this amount to war crimes? Well, look, war crimes have their own definition. International criminal courts, etc., can discuss these. They can take years later. But essentially, a war crime is targeting of civilians in a war situation. Mm -hmm. This is the targeting of civilians in a war situation. It's very hard to see that this is not a war crime on a massive scale. So the Russians, perhaps they'll never be accountable for this, but certainly according to what the international community and law says is a war crime, this is an absolute war crime. OK, we know that the G7 is meeting and we know that NATO uh, is ahead. Z President Zelensky has called for them for help with munitions and aid, etc. But what can they materially do to prevent Putin from attacks such as this? Well, they don't have defensive weapons. They wanted iron domes, the famous defensive uh, missile system from Israel, and Israel said no. 
Um, so they don't have those defensive weapons. So Zelensky is saying our only solution is to have heavy artillery that can hit inside Russia. That's what they're not, they don't have at the moment. This is essentially a defensive war by the Ukrainians. That's why they keep saying, bring us artillery. I recently met the Ukrainian ambassador to, to Australia in Canberra, who'd been to our own defence department in Canberra, asking for attack drones and this and that. So the Ukrainians, even in Canberra, all around the world are saying, give us more aggressive uh, ammunition and artillery, give us equipment that we can fire into Russia and essentially do the same thing as Russia is doing into Ukraine, which of course would be an escalation of this war. Four months in, I think a lot of the world has been surprised by the tenacity and the resilience of the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian armed reserves. Um, since not just last night's attack, but the attack um, previous on the residential building uh, 48 hours ago, President Zelensky seems less energised for obvious reasons. How do you think that his leadership is going to change as a result of that? Will we see more resolve or is this really going to dampen his efforts to lead the country? The Ukrainians done a remarkable job so far, including President Zelensky, in getting this far, four or five months in, to, to have fended off an army that's ten times their size and their might. But you can slowly see that they're getting slower. You can see they're getting more tired. You can see they're getting worn down. The Russians are winning this war slowly. Mm. Now, it's still a win. The Russians are in there for the long haul. They've got all the resources. They've got all the supply lines from the, the next door, from the Donbass, from, from Russia. So the world has to realise that Ukraine is holding the line but is slowly losing the war. Mm. If that's what the West wants, status quo. If the West doesn't want that, they have to urgently rearm the Ukrainians with serious artillery. And that's what the Ukrainians don't have at the moment. They don't have the firepower to hold off Russia for too much longer. They're doing it bit by bit. Um, they're taking city by city, will go for weeks and months, and then finally the Russians get it. So the Russians are winning this war slowly. Mm. And just finally, we're yet to hear a comment from the Kremlin regarding this um, supermarket attack. Do you expect that we will hear something from them and what might that be? Well, the Deputy Ambassador to the United Nations has said a short time ago he's accused Ukraine of using this incident to gain sympathy ahead of the, the summit of the NATO military alliance. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's a pretty hard line and provocative mm. response. Mm -hmm. It's not even we regret civilian deaths and we don't target civilians. The Ukrainians are using this, according to Dmitry Polyansky, mm. they're using this to gain sympathy. You can't get more hard line than that. Mm. The Russians are digging in and it's getting tougher and nastier. Okay, uh, John Lyons, thank you very much for joining us.